This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and it's, it's so much better that yours is completely obsolete. It's only $1,400 for the mid-range model, plus like a day of my time getting all my apps and my watch to work properly. $1,400 is a ton of money, and I would really like to see you justify getting a new phone for that price. Oh. So what, like why? Innovation. Look right here, Chels. That's a button. You have a switch? Oh my God. And you know what else? The scientists at Apple, they study human behavior. They see how people interact with these phones and they discovered something weird. People hold them in their hands. And you know what they did? They rounded off these edges to make it more comfortable to fit in your hands. I've seen this before. It's sounding familiar. It reminds me of a time in 2008, the iPhone 3. <laughs> Why do you have that? <laughs> Don't ask questions, just listen to me. Look at these rounded edges. Oh my gosh, it's so small, it's so cute. I actually really love this, and I know you're trying to plug the new phone, but I think that we should possibly go back to the smaller, more rounded, comfortable phone. If you want to see a comparison between these two, write a comment and subscribe. Back to what's important, I'm a photographer. I capture images and share them with the world. So the camera is very important to me. And that's where the iPhone 15 Pro Max is really going to shine. Okay. Like, look, for example, this is photographer stuff. I can push this 1X here and switch between a 24 millimeter lens, a 28 millimeter lens, and a 35 millimeter lens. And I don't know how they do it because I don't have that many lenses on the back of my camera. I actually do know how they do it, Tony. They just crop into one lens. So when you're zooming into 35 millimeter with that lens, you're losing more than half of your megapixels. That means that the pictures aren't that sharp. I would in... like to actually put them side by side and see if you're actually getting what you think you paid for. You're sounding like an Android fanboy. But the big win is a five times telephoto zoom. That's right, 120 millimeters at my fingertips. You're stuck at 77 millimeters. I don't know what you're gonna do with that. Oh, I, just, I think we should just go out and test it because that actually sounds amazing. I loved the telephoto lens in the Samsung phone and I feel like Apple's trying to replicate that. So we should just try it and see if it actually works. Stop being so condescending and trying to avoid it. I think we should take these out into the real world and test them. That's exactly what I just said. Let's go. Okay, I'm teasing you some, Chelsea, but I really do want to see which of these has the better cameras. But yeah, me too. Let's start with a telephoto. Let's take a picture of that lighthouse way out there. Just zoom in as much as you can. You just want to start with the most favorable test for you. Okay. <laughs> How does yours look? <laughs> okay, you're supposed to take pictures of the lighthouse. <laughs> see what you're into now. Oh my gosh, I'm in embarrassed for you. Yours doesn't look much better. Wrong, Chelsea. Let's zoom in. My iPhone 15 Pro looks way better. Look, there's a crane here and you can clearly see the detail. This is all mushy. iPhone 14 Pro is using algorithms or artificial intelligence or something and it's coming out sharp but all warpy and weird. Mine just looks a little blurry but realistic. Maybe we shouldn't go quite so far out. Maybe atmospheric when. conditions it are weird. overwhelming the superior optics. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> What's something closer that's not yeah. a naked guy? <laughs> what about the little eyeglasses thing? How much do you think I should zoom to make this test favorable for you? Telephoto test number two, zoom in. The first thing I see is the new iPhone has a massive amount of default sharpening on the raw files. Apple's setting the default sharpening to 50, which is crazy high, and it's probably gonna throw off all the results that you see from other reviews. Even when it set the sharpening to zero, there's still a lot of sharpening in the image. Like, look at these hard lines here. This is caused by over sharpening. Nobody should bake sharpening into a raw file. That's the point of raw files. This is the best we can do, so let's compare them. Looking at the texture of the metal and the fine details here, the new iPhone telephoto is definitely better for faraway subjects. I feel like telephoto, you're definitely getting a little more sharpness, but I want to see overall which cameras are more sharp because I have that 70 millimeter range and you're not going to do as well there. So now I'm going to stack 
the test in my favor. I don't think we have time for all these tests, Chelsea. I do. I always... <laughs> it's photography is about the art, not about... So, suddenly it's about the art. Okay, so my plan is we're going to take a picture of the menu at the Boardwalk Creamery. And as we step back, we'll zoom in. And then we'll see whose menu is more readable at different zooms. Okay. It's just, it's not so exciting, but it's like, it's kind of technical. I kind of like it. Opening my camera with my button. Start at 0.5. And now we'll go to one. Um, let's do like 2.9. Let's go to four. Oh, you want to keep going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because there's going to be some point when I come back. With the main 24 millimeter lens, 48 megapixel RAWs, the two look the same, though again, the iPhone 15 Pro has a little more sharpening. Things get interesting at three times. That's where Chelsea has a dedicated nine millimeter lens, and my iPhone 15 still has to use the 24 millimeter lens cropped three times. Chelsea's iPhone 14 Pro Max is really sharp here. My iPhone 15 Pro Max looks terrible, absolutely terrible. Look at these thick black bands caused by over sharpening where the iPhone tried to make up for its three times crop. Look, both files are 12 megapixels, but if we do the math, my iPhone 15 Pro is only getting 1.2 megapixels, and then it upscales it to 12 megapixels, just making up more than 90% of the pixels, and that's why everything looks mushy. As we zoom into 4.9 times, this gets even worse. Look at the iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the iPhone 15 Pro. This is supposed to be an upgrade. Now my iPhone 15 Pro is at half a megapixel, but still generating unnecessarily large 12 megapixel files. That means that Apple is making up about 96% of this image, and you can see it's not doing a great job. It looks like crap. But wait, everything changes when we get to five times because I have a telephoto five times lens, and now Chelsea's the one cropping. And yeah, the iPhone 15 Pro looks a little bit better at this point, but it's not nearly the difference that we saw before. Here's a chart for my fellow nerds. Vertically, the y-axis here is the number of megapixels and horizontally, it's the focal length. The iPhone 14 Pro is in blue and the iPhone 15 is in green. The chart is logarithmic because detail is logarithmic. 12 megapixels shows twice as much detail as six megapixels. Two megapixels shows twice as much detail as one megapixel. When you zoom from the prime focal lengths, the megapixels necessarily drop because the phone is cropping this data it gets from the sensor even though it does not change the image size. That's why we see this dip at 20 millimeters. It is cropping from 13 millimeters. When we use the prime lenses at 13 millimeters, 24 millimeters, 77 millimeters, and 120 millimeters, the megapixels are a full 12.2 megapixels. All the in-between focal lengths involve cropping and losing data. Everything is a tie until 77 millimeters. And then the iPhone 14 Pro is way ahead of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which has barely over one megapixel of data at that point. By the time we get to 115 millimeters, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has just a little over half a megapixel of data. That is a huge difference, and that's why the iPhone 14 Pro Max pictures look so much better. Once we get to 120 millimeters, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is back at 12.2 megapixels and is ahead of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but you can see the difference here is significantly less than the difference here. And that's why I think Apple screwed over iPhone 15 Pro Max users. This entire frequently used mid-range is way, way, way worse on the iPhone 15 Pro than it was on the previous generation. Okay, that was like a highly technical, not even extremely practical test. So let's do a practical test and take portraits of each other and see how they look. Okay. This is my smile. Oh, I recognize it from before. Thanks. I have to smile consistently or else people think I'm throwing the test. Let's look at the heck files with the default F4.5 fake aperture. You can see the old camera processes her face a little bit brighter. The new camera is a little bit more natural, but it's the Foca I'm really interested in. Here the iPhone 14 did terrible. This is really ugly Foca. Whereas on the iPhone 15, the transition looks much more natural. But if we go down a bit, the iPhone 14 handled this part of the hair better. So maybe the algorithm is the same and just small variations in the image are making all the difference. The focal length does make difference. You can see her forehead and her nose are flattened a little bit compared to what you get out of the iPhone 14 Pro Max's wider 77 millimeter lens. The 77 millimeter lens is more intimate, more natural. The 120 millimeter lens is more professional, more formal, more fashion. Another big change I want to test is flaring. They added some coating to the iPhone 15 Pro, which should reduce all the globs that you see anytime you're shooting into the sun or a bright light. So let's pretend that the sun is out now and I'm doing a side-by-side -side test. We already did these. 
Yeah. <laughs> with the ultra wide lenses, the flaring was identical. With the wide lens, the flaring was much better on the new iPhone 15 Pro. With the telephoto lenses, the flaring also seems a little bit better on the iPhone 15 Pro. I repeated this test at night, but the two iPhones chose different frame rates and shutter speeds, so ignore the differences in the noise and detail. For the ultra wide lens, the flaring is about a tie. For the wide lens, the iPhone 15 Pro Max definitely wins. The coatings definitely improve flaring. For the telephoto lens, the 5X lens actually has worse flaring. I have one more thing I want to show off, which is the log video for ProRes in the new iPhone, and that requires a high contrast scene. All right, well, let's find somewhere with some darkness and some light and test this out. Let's just go to the car. Okay. All right, here. Um, since the engine's not running, could you make engine sounds for me? Just... <laughs> Okay, that was That's first gear. Coaxing. The iPhone 15 Pro cameras introduce log format video that captures more dynamic range. That's why the clouds aren't blown out like they were on the iPhone 14 Pro. Well, I'm the smug one now, Tony, because I have no regrets about sticking with my iPhone 14. The biggest improvements were software based and they could definitely give you those, but they kind of held it back. I don't think I would want 120 millimeter lens instead of the 77 millimeter. Like I want both of them, but I don't I don't want to give up my mid-range quality. Yeah, and that's my biggest reason why is that I like the mid-range specific lens. That's when I'm shooting portraits and getting some subject separation. And I mean, that's most of what I do. If I wanted to shoot telephoto as a photographer, that's when I would go to my designated gear. If you do want the mid-range telephoto instead of the 120 millimeters, you can get the regular iPhone 15 Pro, not the Pro Max, and they'll give you the better lens configuration, in my opinion. Or of course, you could just try to destroy capitalism by not upgrading at all. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, subscribe if you wanna see a review of this against the Google Pixel 8 Pro and the Samsung 23 Ultra. And if you wanna see us review it against that, uh, write a comment. I wanna, let's bring back the iPhone 3. Please. Collectively. I, I do kind of want that. I bet it has like four megapixels though. Bye. Thanks for watching, bye. This isn't sponsored.